Okay, this is a continuation in a series of videos whose express purpose is to show you how to solve various kinematic problems effectively and quickly using the SUVAT method. And I'm assuming that you have seen the introductory video, part one, so if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. And just to briefly show you the overview of that video, uh, you can pause the video here if you want to look at read this. And I'm scrolling too fast. Okay. All right, just to remind ourselves that to recognize that you've got a kinematic a problem um, where you can use SUVAT, the object must be undergoing a constant or uniform acceleration or deceleration. And uh, you're going to need at least three out of the five SUVAT. Three out of the five, velocity, initial or final, displacement, and time. And that you're not dealing with forces or mass or energy, so no newtons, kilograms, or joules. And the four steps to do this SUVAT method is, one, write the SUVAT vertically. Two, enter three out of the five SUVAT variables next to their letters. Three, circle the variable you need. And four, draw an arrow through the variable that's left and use the equation that's affiliated with that variable to solve for the circle variable. So it should look something like this. doesn't have to be those particular UVAs, but it would look something like that when you're ready to solve for your answer. And hopefully you'll have memorized these equations by the time you get to this point in the series, but we'll take a look at each, each problem. We'll look at that grid there. So the SUVAT method is essentially a just a simple algorithm to direct you to the right equation quickly on a time test which is usually the biggest problem with working kinematic problems all right so our first problem in this video is that a car is traveling at a constant velocity of 30 meters per second and then it undergoes a constant acceleration of thir 3 meters per second square for 10 seconds. So what is the car's displacement after 10 seconds? All right, so what are we, what are we saying here is, is that the, the car is humming along at, let me move my SUVAT up here a little bit, but we've got this car that's humming along at 30 meters per second, and... Um, put it right there and then all of a sudden uh, the person hits the accelerator and starts accelerating the car at time zero um, at for three meters per, at three meters per second squared so then we're going to add our acceleration of three meters per second squared and that's going to go for 10 seconds so what we're interested in is what is the displacement after that 10 second period of acceleration. So we have our step one, we've lined up vertically our letters. Step two, we're going to fill in the information. Our initial velocity is 30 meters per second because that at time zero was when our problem became interesting to us and that's also the initial velocity at that point in time. Uh, we have an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared notice that they're both positive because they're going in, since they're going in the same direction and we'll just say positive is right that this car is speeding up and then the last thing is the interval of time is 10 seconds so what are we looking for step four, uh, three is we circle our variable that we're interested in and then step four is we draw a line through the variable that's left and we write the affiliated equation with that displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared all right so we'll go down here and I'll just pause the video there in case you haven't memorized the equations you can pause and look at them and then here is our math so we take our equation and we plug in u plug in time we plug in a and time again squared and we come up with 
uh, seconds will cancel there so we've got 300 meters and then we've got seconds squared and seconds squared so they cancel out so we've got another and that's one half so we've got another 150 meters so our displacement for the car once it starts to accelerate after 10 seconds is 450 meters okay fairly straightforward problem all right next problem we have a particle that's uniformly accelerated from one meter per second to five meters per second over a distance of 15 meters find the acceleration all right so we have uniform first thing we do is look for uniform or constant acceleration or deceleration so we have that so we know we have a kinematic problem and so we do SUVAT. Step one, we line up our letters vertically. Step two, fill in three out of the five bits of information. We have an initial velocity of one meter per second. So it's one meter per second here. And a final velocity of five meters per second. And it went over a distance of displaced 15 meters here and that's step two. Step three is circle the thing that we are looking for. We're looking for acceleration and then step four draw a line through the remaining variable and write the equation that's affiliated with that. So that's final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times displacement. So we'll do the math for that. <coughs> and um, we're solving for a we fill in v squared u squared and we've got displacement here and algebraically manipulate or move things around and so we have meter squared per second squared minus meter squared per second squared on top over meters 30 meters all right, so we end up with 24 meters per meter squared per second squared over 30 meters, and one of our meters will cancel out on the top, the bottom cancels out, and so we're left with 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Now, this problem actually was giving, given where it said find the acceleration, and then the second question that was there was find the time taken. Okay, so there was actually two questions, but let's break them down into two separate SUVATs um, where they're uh, just like they would be two questions independently asked. So let's look at this one. So if we, it's the same information, but this time we're just asking for the other unknown, which was time taken. So how long it took for this to happen. So we started off with one meter per second. We ended up with five meters per second. And it was displaced for 15 meters. And we want to know the time. Okay, so we got one meter per second, five meters per second, final velocity. 15 meters was the displacement. That's step one and two I just did. Step three is we're looking for time. We circle that. Step four, draw the arrow through the remaining variable. Because we're, we're missing acceleration and time, and this time we're looking for time. Um, and uh, we found acceleration 0 0.8 initially. So this time we're going to have the equation S is equal to initial velocity plus final, or final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2, which is just the average acceler velocity, and then that's multiplied by time. Okay, so let's solve this. So we go down here and plug in our V and our U that was given and that S was given. And we end up with 15 meters. 15 meters. We div uh, bring this to the other side, which is going to end up being 3 meters per second. And the meters cancel out and the seconds is on top. So we get five seconds for our answer. So the reason I, I'm working both unknowns that are mentioned in this equation because we were given these three bits of data these were the two things that we didn't know and we answered both of them independently. 
but a lot of times you're going to have um, homework where you're going to be asked the two questions uh, in the same problem. I mean, they're going to be right next to each other. So let's let's look at that because that's a it's kind of a good problem to a good problem to be in or a good dilemma to be in. So let's take a look at let's say we had four bits of information. So let's say we worked the first problem, and we were given that, we were given that, and we were given that, and we solved for that, just like we did in the first problem. And then the next question that followed was find the time. All right, so we don't need to go through the two suvats where we do three out of the five, because the, we've, in the first part of the question, we answered uh, the acceleration. So now we have four out of the five. So what do you do when you're in that situation and you're trying to find time? All right, so you look over here, and one thing that you should be aware of is that when you're in this situation, the only equation you can't use to find time is the one that's got t, that's affiliated with t, because that's the missing variable. So we could use this equation, that equation, that equation, or that equation to solve for time. So it's just, like I said, it's a good problem. It's a good dilemma to be in because um, we have four equations that we can use. The big problem is, is which one do we use? And so, um, you know, it, it's really your preference. I mean, I wouldn't use this, this one or this one. I would either use that one or that one to solve for time. Okay, so that's that's one way and you know let's just quickly show that we'll just pick this one right here alright so we have final velocity which is 5 is equal to initial velocity which is 1 plus AT or acceleration which is 0 0.8 alright so we're going to subtract um, 1 from both sides and so we end up with 5 minus 1. We've got 1 there. We'll subtract 1 from both sides. So we've got 0 0.8 t. I'm sorry. That's uh, v equals u plus a t. So it's 5 equals 1 plus 0 0.8. Let me put that in there. t. So we end up with 5. Subtract 1 from both sides and we end up with 4 is equal to 0 0.8 t and then we're going to divide 0 0.8 on both sides so we end up with 4 over 0 0.8 is equal to t and then if you want to move the decimal place forward each place we end up with 40 over 8 is equal to t t is equal to 5 so you end up with 5 seconds here just like we calculated Okay, sorry for that being a little sloppy, but anyway, you get the idea. And we could have done the same thing down here. We could have added 5 plus 1 for V and, and uh, U, divide by 2, times T, and that's equal to displacement, which is 15. So we have 6 over 2 is 3, so we end up with 15 divided by 3 is equal to T, T is equal to 5. So anyway, the point of it is, is pick... When you're in a situation where you end up with four bits of information and they st and they want the problems asking for more information to solve all five unknowns, SVVAT, is to pick the easiest equation to use. So that's like this situation where we could have had the problem where maybe first we found the time and then the, the first question might have been find the time and then the second question was find the acceleration. Okay, so we already found the time and we got this. This was given. All that was given to us. So again, we what, what equation can't we use? We can't use this equation because there's no acceleration in it. So again, we've got four equations that we can choose from. Clearly, this would be the easiest one to use to solve for A. Okay, so um, you know, we could plug that in there real quick. It's going to be 5 is equal to U is 1, and that's plus AT, and the T here is 5, so it's going to be 5 there. So we, we subtract 1 from both sides again, and we get 4 is equal to A times 5, and then we divide 5 from both sides, and we get 
zero four fifths of zero point eight is equal to a, and that was what the answer was zero point eight meters per second squared. Okay, so much for that, and let's take a look at our last problem here. A car accelerates from rest with a uniform acceleration of zero point eight meters per second and I should have put per second squared in there let me do that real quick acceleration 0 0.8 meters per second squared and uh, find the final velocity okay so we have a, a problem here where we've got uniform acceleration alright and uh, it's accelerating with a 0 0.8 meters per second squared and it's doing it for five seconds and um, accelerated from rest so our starting point here or our starting velocity here is zero meters per second so we've got three out of the five bits of information and we're looking for final velocity so step one we listed our our um, SUVAT step two we enter our in, three out of five bits of information. We've got initial velocity of zero. We have time of five seconds. We have acceleration of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Step three, circle the thing you're looking for. We're looking for final velocity. Step four, draw a line through the remaining variable and write the and use the equation that's affiliated with it. And for this one, it's final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So we go down here and um, we plug that in. So we're using this equation. We're solving for final velocity. We've got u, 0 meters per second squared times acceleration times time and uh, don't have to do much manipulation of the equation to solve and notice that we've got s meters per second squared times seconds which is seconds over one so that seconds cancels out and that is left with seconds meters per second and so we have a velocity of final velocity of four meters per second Okay, not too bad, and we will continue with our um, problems. And I just want to say that if you want the introductory video, if you're not at this the uh, playlist, which is the that's the introductory is the first video that in this vi in this video that you're looking at below the screen in the show more. Uh, if you just click that expand at, there'll be a link to the introductory video. Okay, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.